So, hello, hello, friendos. Death in Chinfin is about to end. I hope we've all had time to check out this story, because today we're going to be doing a story review of everything we've learned from the event, all the character details, the world building details and whatnot, and just go over them. Okay, so, a death in Chunfen. This event is directly continuing off of Chong Yue's event. It directly continues off of it after the end when Cho Bai and Chong Yue part ways. To better understand this event, we need to understand where Cho Bai has come from. Cho Bai grew up with a bandit father, and that bandit father was killed by the human army. And it's implied that Chong Yue killed her dad. So she spent the last five years infiltrating Yumin and becoming Chong Yue's student just so she could get a chance to kill him one day. But at the end of Chong Yue's event, she decided that vengeance is beyond her and she let go of it. So she parted ways with her master. But now she's a lone wolf after leaving Yumin. Chobai is now on her own, but not for long. Because last we saw Chobai, we saw her on the outskirts of Yumin and she was hunting down the remaining Shanghai Zong members. The Shanghai Zong are a terrorist group of Farin but worshippers. And apparently, along their way, they picked up a straggler. They picked up this little kid, Fang Xiaoxi. They picked up this kid after he ran away from home. And after Cho Bai took care of every single terrorist member, she sort of picked him up and tried to make sure that he got home safely. But our boy, our boy wasn't about that. Our boy wanted to make a name for himself. Fang, let's call him Fang. Hopefully not to be confused with another Fang. Our boy Fang wanted to make a name for himself. He didn't want to go home. Home was full of bad memories. Home was full of bad juju. Home was not where his heart was. And so they begin their journey, Chobai, apparently showing off her martial arts while taking out the Shanghai Zong. It attracted Fang. Fang wanted to learn. Fang wanted to figure out why she's so strong. Could she possibly take him in as a disciple so that he too could learn some martial arts, some kung fu? What better way would there be to become a hero than to learn from a kung fu master like Chobai? But she wasn't about that life. She wasn't about to be a master to some Shota. No, she had things to do. She's a lone wanderer. Technically, she still had no goal by then. Before he decided that he wanted to become her disciple, he ran away first, and then he kept getting caught. So he's like, okay, you're very strong. Please take me in as your disciple. But still, Shobai wanted to take him home. So what we got from this event is that there are definitely remote places that need supplies to get to them. And that's why Yumin itself, it has sort of a network of catastrophe roads to bring supplies all around the country, especially to remote places like Fang's Village. Now Fang's Village is very interesting. Because the backstory of Fang's village is that the first person of their clan, a long time ago, they tried to cut out the mountain. They tried to dig and dig and dig and dig just to make a space for themselves at the foot of a mountain. But then suddenly, while he was like half awake, maybe hallucinating on something trippy, I don't know, mountain itself, it spoke and just got tired of his bullshit and it kind of moved away. The mountain moved away. Surely one man couldn't have cut out an entire valley just for his village. Surely that hallucination of the mountain moving wasn't real, right? <laughs> Very interesting implications considering we just got through an event all about the Ferenmits, the old gods of Terra, and generations and generations after that, our boy Fang was born. Fang's mom married a hunter from the outside, and they settled in the village. So Fang has always had this, he's always felt like he was an outsider to the clan in the village. He didn't even share the name of the village clan. He definitely has a complex about that. So one day, he just tried bombing the place. <laughs> the little f They were having drought problems and supply problems. The village was really struggling. Fang definitely thought that uh, the land where the temple stood, it would be much better used for farming land. The little sh kid that he was, he tried to bomb it and destroy it. Hilarity ensues, villagers get mad at him. He doesn't get chased out of town, he runs himself out of town because he thinks that villagers would, you know. They definitely have things to be angry at about him, but no, they were actually looking for him. They were very concerned, so... A lot of his problems are very much self-inflicted. and That's how he ended up outside. He's been traveling outside for the past three years. He hasn't really made a name for himself and that's gonna be important. So, they arrived back in the village. 
and then they see that, hey, wait a minute, there's this weird tombstone, 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 I've been playing too much FF14, there's this weird tombstone in the middle of the village, he's wondering why does it have a name yet, who's buried here? So they find out, sometime before, there was a quote-unquote landslide, huh, there was a landslide and it killed a young boy. And the village was already struggling, so what the village decided was that the young boy would be great to be used as an insurance scam. <laughs> they planned to scam the Yanis government because the village elder, he tried asking for subsidies from the Yanis government, but it never came for some reason. We'll get back to that later. So they're really struggling. And there just so happened to be a boy that died from a landslide near the town. So they're thinking, hey, wait, there's procedure to this. We could get money off of his untimely death. But they didn't know the boy. The boy was an outsider. And so they thought Fang was already gone. We haven't seen him in years. He's also probably dead. Let's just name this outsider, this dead corpse, after Fang. And they're gonna use his name to ensure and scam the government. Based. So that's how they plan to get some money to keep the village alive. I can't actually blame them. Y you know, if it was an accident, they might as well get some money for it. They could afford new farming supplies. They'll help them get through the coming years and the drought and whatnot. Problem is, the circumstances of the death was pretty sussy. It was pretty sussy. So once Fang came back, people were surprised that he was still alive. He met back with his father. It wasn't that warm of a reunion, but it was a reunion. They told him all about the plan, and as usual, because our boy, our boy has such a complex about living in the village, he has such a complex about his own name, so his name would be registered as dead in official records. He wasn't about that. He wants to be a hero. He wants his name known throughout all of Yan. Yan do that when he's officially declared dead, and they lock him up. <laughs> they lock him up for a bit because he's kind of being a bit rebellious. Somehow you can see his point, but also... The village needs the funds to survive, so I don't think there's a clear black and white answer to this situation. So they lock him up for a bit. They get an old frail man to guard him. That's how much this village does not have the means to do this operation. It was more of a locked door situation where please do not come out. Come on, dude. We need the money. Just please stay there for a bit. Let us use your name for this insurance scam. But no, he escaped. <laughs> and Chobai... Chobai was left lurking around the village. They thought she left, but no, she was still lurking about, trying to figure things out. She learned about the operation. She stated that she had no plans to stop it because even she could understand what the village was going through. Until there was a wrench in the works. Mulberry showed up. Mulberry was with a disaster organization, not technically with Yan. She showed up a day early before the Yanis officials arrived, so they mistook her for the Yanis officials. So she arrived early, started questioning them about everything. Village Elder was being sussy, dodging all of her questions. So she decided, let's go check on top of the mountain. Let's examine where the landslide came from. For some reason, Saga is also in this event. She's been traveling around Yan for a while. This happens post leaving Dusk Scroll. And Saga was unironically the best part of this story. It's like Saga is definitely wise beyond her years, and she was the one bouncing off of the village elder the most. But like I said, Mulberry was suspicious. Mulberry checked out the top of the mountain. Yeah, by this time, Fang was brought up to the top of the mountain to make sure he doesn't escape. So Mulberry checks out the place where the landslide happened, and lo and behold, it doesn't seem to be a natural disaster. There should be catastrophe fortifications that protect the village and the catastrophe roads from landslides like this. But no, it seems to have been blown up by explosives. Explosives similar to the ones used by Fang when he tried to destroy the village temple. Who could have gotten those explosives? Who could have confiscated them? None other than the village elder. So the village elder caused a landslide, presumably to start the insurance scam, and then a lowly stranger, a lowly boy, was caught in it and actually died. So there's that guilt now weighing down on him. So he accidentally killed a lone boy. <laughs> Where does Wind Chimes come in with all of this? So Wind Chimes was a messenger, doing her messengerly duties, until she met a young boy, an infected young boy, with a camcorder. That young boy, Sort of just traveled around with her, taking all the sights and scenery and the people, learning all about how people live outside of cities. 
she sort of overreacted and got mad at him because it was like like he was exploiting the lives of others just to make his film. I feel like she overreacted and they split up. She got mad at him, she left him out in the wilderness, and because of that, he was on his own. And unfortunately, he met his untimely demise by a landslide caused by the village elder. But anyway, the kid, he died. Bang! They want to use his name for the insurance scam, and the landslide was fake. So, all these things come together. Fang did not like this situation at all. At the top of the mountain, yeah, the villagers, they had a lot of pet up frustration against him. Fang was being really uncooperative. They just wanted the money to survive. He's still kind of really selfish. So, one villager tried to kill him, tried to push him off the cliff, until our heroine, Shobai, arrived and saved him. And Fang's dad had to come up to him, to try to stop him from ruining everything. He finally decided, he finally relented, and that's when he jumped off the cliff on his own. Because if they wanted a dead kid, they're getting a dead kid. <laughs> and then he jumped off the cliff. And Chobai jumped off after him, saving him in the nick of time. And now they're outside of the village. The village elder finally understood the weight of what he's done. They weren't planning to do the scam anymore because he finally regretted things. However, Wind Chime had some good news. She was there for a reason, as a messenger, to deliver the news that the Yanni's government didn't actually abandon them. They were a bit two years late, but they're getting their subsidy, they're getting their funding directly from the Annie's government. A lot of catastrophes got in the way of that, so they're getting it eventually. And they finally got the letter from Windchimes. And that left the village elders shook. It's like, wait, I went through all of that? I blew up the side of the mountain, caused a landslide? I inadvertently killed a kid, and we're still actually getting the money? Yeah, <laughs> this event, it was a roller coaster ride. It went to all sorts of places. But at the end of the day, everyone's okay. Except for maybe the kid that died from the landslide. He is totally dead. <laughs> and Chobai, Chobai never wanted a disciple. She was pretty aimless once she left human. She was just wandering around looking for the remnants of Shanghai Zong. But now she got her own disciple. She got a shot of her own. And now they have the rare and prestigious dynamic in Arknights of the Oni Shota pairing. This is definitely gonna inspire a lot of fan art. <laughs> So they're traveling together now. Chobai had her own character arc of learning to open up herself to others and especially Fang. Fang had to accept that he had to give up his name for the greater good. But Chobai was like, heroes don't need names because heroes, they can make names for themselves. Which is actually a pretty good statement to be honest. Chobai took in Fang, plans to teach him her Kung Fu, which is also Chong Yue's Kung Fu. And they're now traveling together. So a death in Chun Fen. It was a very good story. There was a lot of world building with how the catastrophe roads operate and how remote villages get supplies from the government. There was world building with the first clan member, the digger, that apparently got blessed by a Farron myth question mark. He tried to dig out a mountain and the mountain just got annoyed and moved away. Where did that mountain go? Are we going to see that mountain ever again? Hmm? That mountain Farron myth? Hmm? Or was he killed off in the great <laughs> Ferenmuth hunts? We don't know. So we got some Yan world building. We got some character development for Chobai. She has a goal now. She's traveling around Yan, training her young disciple. They're just adventuring around. When she'll come to Rhodes Island, we have no idea. Actually, no, we might have an idea. I just don't have her. I didn't bother pulling for her. <laughs> and we definitely saw wind chimes come to Rose Island and she was definitely dealing with the fact that her infected friend got killed after she got mad at him and ran off. So there's that. Saga got some great characterization this story event. Like goddamn, they're setting up Saga to be such a good character. She's so wise. I love her dialogue. She reminds me of Urianje from FF14. There are a lot of memes about Saga being a noisy doggo but in the story she's actually very wise beyond her years. It's very cool to see her interact with much older characters and stand her ground amongst them. Mulberry was just there as a wrench in the works. She was there to expose the, the machinations of the Chunfen village. So yeah, a death in Chunfen. We got some great character arcs with our two leads. We got some great world building in the country of Yan. And it wrapped up pretty nicely. No loose ends. Everyone got what they deserved. Fang for being a little sh 
lost his name, but now he gained a new master. The village got their funding. They're gonna survive now. They're gonna get some new tools. Fang's father got the sense of relief that Fang was still alive. And the village is gonna live on. A Death in Chunfen, a story review by your friend Deunez. It was very good. I loved it.